I'll start our public hearing for February the 14th, 2018. Roll call, please. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Here. Councilman Jason Hood. Here. Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Here. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Here. Councilman Mike Williams. Here. Number one on our public hearing. Number one, an ordinance to regulate filming and to provide for filming permits. Councilman Jason Hood. Good afternoon, uh, council members. If you'll remember, I've been talking about this for a couple of weeks, uh, a couple of months now, and uh, you know, I found that the last movie that was in downtown was really a hindrance to a lot of folks. I had a lot of complaints, calls, because I represent a lot of downtown Hammond, so uh, I did a little research, found out what a few other municipalities are doing, and that, to be quite honest, there's not many municipalities that, that charge much of a permit fee, and uh, I thought it would be good for us to have something a little uh, concrete and visible for the public to know what the city actually gets off of any films that come in and block streets, parking lots, sidewalks, things that taxpayers pay for so uh, the uh, the amount of stipulated in the uh, in the ordinance it would uh, they would actually have to uh, pay for the square footage of parking lots and that sort of thing that they would occupy and uh, so I'd be happy to try to answer any questions that you might have or the public has. Any questions from the council? Questions from the public? Yes. Um, I, I'll come up to the poll. Hi, thank State you. State your name and address for the record, please. Absolutely. Alvin Brumfield, 511 South Orange Street. I'm in I'm Mr. Hood's district. Um, yeah, I'm kind of wondering on, on this because unless you're going to stop the movie or prevent or change what they're doing, it's not going to change anything from what they have been doing. And if you're stopping what they're doing or interfering with what they're doing, you're basically going to deter them from coming here. Um, they're, they shoot in a lot of places, they have a lot of options, and you add extra restrictions, it's real easy just to choose a different place. So I'm, I'm still not really clear how it's going to benefit us, because the only benefit we can get is to be able to tell them, no, you can't or that you have to do this or do that, which, like I said, it's a deterrent. They're going to be able to just go someplace else. So I'm a little unclear how, from my point of view on this, how this deterrent is going to help the city of Hammond. And that's, that, that's, that's kind of my question. I didn't intend for this to be a deterrent at all. I intended it I, I to be for something that the public would know what the city's getting for, for the inconvenience of blocking a, a, a street off or blocking a parking lot or blocking parking spaces the, the the merchants get paid from the from the companies and that's all negotiated between them and the city uh, this administration has done a good job of, of uh, negotiating <clears throat> donations as I've been told to the city which is which is fair but you as Joe public do, don't have something transparent to know what exactly that is that the city's getting for the what's going on so it's not intended to be a deterrent. It's intended to, to be something a little bit more concrete, and it's a permit fee. They spend quite a significant amount of money. I don't think that this money will detour them from coming. And to be quite honest, I don't find outside of the notoriety of coming to Hammond where it makes a significant economic impact to our city. Uh, they bring in outside caterers. They, they may stay in hotels. Uh, but the, this last crew, most of their employees came from the South Shore or came from Covington. They're buying uh, building products from outside. I know because I asked them. One of them was next door to my wife's business, and they were bringing outside uh, building materials from Covington. So I think, the, I think it's fair to the public to know what they're getting so when they can't walk down the street that Mr. Uh, name escapes me right now. Joe uh, Citizen. Uh, Mr. Claude, I'm sorry, Mr. Claude. Mr. Claude, he helped pay for that sidewalk. He, he wants to know, in my opinion, Mr. Claude wants, he may want to know. Why is that? So that, that's what this is. It's not a I know it wasn't meant to be a deterrent. Uh -huh. I, I don't think most taxes are, but it can have that impact. 
And yes, I, I think it's inadvertent. It wasn't. I, I, I completely agree and, and believe you that it was not the intent. But I think that will be some of the impact. And the fee, as I've looked at it, most fees, you're right. That, that amount of money you're paying, they don't care. The money's not an issue. It's the one more step. And if you actually do anything to keep them from blocking the sidewalks, that's when they're like, oh, we'll just use a different town. So you, the, you want the public to know what's happening and, and, and so forth, and that's, that's great. I'm not sure if the, well, I guess the, the license that would tell them what's, what's going to happen, but the street would still get blocked. And if it's not going to get blocked, then it's a deterrent from them using this. They want to use something that they can shoot their movie in and whatever it is they need to do, whether it's block the street, block the sidewalk, or whatever. And, um, but I, I understand what you're saying. If they do come, we're not necessarily getting a lot of benefit other than maybe a little bit of publicity. I understand. Sure. Um, so. Thank it you. Truly, it truly depends on the movie. What we started doing is taking it on an individual basis. A lot of the smaller movies didn't have a lot of funds to come in, but yet we had one particular movie that was a small movie that ended up staying in our hotels, eating in our restaurants for about two, 35 days. Uh, bigger companies that came in, like the last one, uh, we always, one of the big problems we had at the beginning was merchants were being shut out from their businesses that weren't being paid. So what we've done in the past is made sure that all merchants made the deal with the movie company when they came in that was substantial enough for them to, if they decided to shut down for the amount of days that they were in business. So it's been working out that way. This right here, you know, some of these fees, we've tried to do some research and base it off of New Orleans and other areas like that. So to have something on paper is not necessarily a bad thing, but we do deal with each movie on an on a individual basis. And we try not to, to run them off unless they're truly not gonna eat in our hotels and they're staying elsewhere and they're bringing their own food in. And the majority of these companies do bring their own food in. Yeah, it's a contract for the whole movie, not just here, yeah. Um, I had a question there. Um, I was, I understand, well, would you, would you be able to have a basically a master agreement or they still got to make negotiations with each individual business also? Absolutely. You would have a master agreement. You negotiate with the individual This is simply, this, this ordinance is simply only to deal with city, street, right. sidewalks, parking lots, anything. Anything outside of that, that would be negotiated with the property owner and the movie company. I understand. All right. Thank you. Okay. <clears throat> Good evening, Amy Brumfield, 511 South Orange Street. Um, I would just like to say that, uh, for one, I don't have figures in front of me, so I don't know what the proposed uh, monies are or what they entail, but um, for the negotiated donations to the city, that sounds wonderful, um, and those are kind of like bonuses, I guess you could say, because it's not really in the budget or expected. So what I would like to see or maybe see considered is that those funds or a portion of those funds go towards arts initiatives throughout the city. That would be wonderful, whether it's um, beautifying and putting pieces of art and statues and what have you throughout the city, or if it's other means, performing arts, music, whatever. But I would like to see some of that go back towards arts in our city, because it just seems fitting. Thank you very much. Thank you. How you doing? Nick Olivia, 17396 Highway 190 East. Wasn't coming for this one, but it's pretty interesting. Um, mostly what happens here is going to turn into a tax. And if you listen to what the, the state did, the state's taken away a lot of the, a lot of the resources for the They've, they've cut out a lot of the funding for that, so it's starting to back off on the, on the uh, filming companies coming to Louisiana. So the same thing's gonna happen here. If you're already getting money from them, I don't see why you need a permit. I mean, you might wanna have a permit just so you know what's going on and put in the paper what's going on, but I don't think you need a fee. That's just my opinion. Thank you. Mr. President, I have a question. Just for, just for clarification, Mr. Uh, Mayor, uh, <clears throat> that donation, this, this Ordinance would 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 uh, replace the, the the donation concept because am I saying that correctly? This ordinance, I I think. I mean, unless, you, unless you're going to answer for the mayor, I'm not. Yes, you can answer because when I was director of administration, Mason turned over the movies to myself, and now that Lacey is on. So then I answer to Lacey. So yeah. just uh, yeah. I just want to get a clarification for the public because I think that might be a question: is it is it replacing the donation or is it? in addition to the donation? 
That's undecided at this time. Right now, the ordinance is only speaking to the street <coughs> and the parking. And Councilman Hood, you know, was very specific in that, and right. that is what the other right. folks have on tap. Right. If they end up using our water, if they end up using our barricades, if they end up using our portable signs, if they need fire trucks for labor, if they need police officers for labor, all that is in addition. That is not covered under this ordinance right. in any way. So, so, so they goes into the general fund at this time. Right. So, so this would be in the general fund. And, and there still could be a negotiation for donation or a fee for those other services. All of those things will be required to have okay. some sort of financial value to them. That's what I thought. That's what we've been doing in the Swimming. past, and that's what we will continue okay. to do. Okay, that's fine. Good afternoon. My name is Nick Gagliano, 1007 West Thomas Street, Suite J. I'm the owner of the Gagliano Group, a local marketing and public relations firm. Um, I have no problem with the ordinance the way it is. Um, the problem that I can see could be an unintended consequence is that for the marketing firms here in Hammond, I know there's two other firms, the way the ordinance is written, any commercial videotaping or filming needs a permit. And while I understand for the, the budget film industry, it could affect our business that when we normally shoot a commercial, let's say we're on Kate Square or as a Murray Park, is that it's normally one camera person, a light person, and one truck, meaning uh, like a van that takes up the, um, the parking spot. So it's not the big scale. However, the way this is written, we would be included into that and we would have to get a permit, theoretically, every time we shot a local commercial. So what I'd like the council to do is if you can add an amendment under your, um, there's a group in there that's um, excluded from getting a permit. One of them is still photographers. I'd like to see if we could put some type of um, exclusion if you have a production of less than five people that you wouldn't need a permit on that. Because if not, then every time we shoot a commercial, we'd have to pay the $50, go through the permitting process, and it, normally it's about two to three hours and we're finished on our shoots. It's nothing elaborate. If we would ever have a big shoot, like for a, a large company where we do need the lights and the big crews like you see in New Orleans, the Toyota, you know, something like that, then we would certainly fall within the blocking of the streets and follow the permit. But if you did it, and I felt like having four, five under five, which would be four people, and not doing a monetary value, so it's easy to figure out if somebody's abusing a rule when you go out there and you see more than five people, then it would be in violation. So I would like for the council to consider that as an amendment to the exclusion that you already have in here. If it does go through, I mean, you charge the people for doing the commercials that you do, and the fee right. that I'm seeing is $50. Right. So it's not really that much of a fee. No, but the way it is, I mean, if you're going to do the still photographers, then they should have to do it as well. It should be a playing field for all the local businesses. And so I felt like that would be because the still photographers for are excluded. So if they're doing a wedding shoot in Zamuri Park, they don't have to pay the permit or the fee. And it's about the same amount of time a camera person and sometimes one light person with them. And so this really affects the local people who are paying the, the, use, the sales use tax, also the license fee. So we feel we are contributing to the city for that. I, I agree with that comment. Yeah. If business is already paying taxes. Right. We, I would be in favor of some kind of exemption. Do you? Whether it be five, under five, or less, <laughs> less than five. Business so. that's, and or any business that may be permitted in the city and already paying taxes. I, I, would have, I think that would be a good exemption. Yeah. And we, we can address that in a. In a Today. Do you have do you have anything? There, How would there, you want that? The other the other thing I just saw in here, just for clarification, it doesn't really affect what I was just talking about, is that you, um, in here it says it's two days to you have two days before you shoot to get a permit, but later on it says the city has five days to make a um, determination. So you may want to just clean that language up so it it's the same. And the last thing is on the fees. Um, it's pretty good written as far as. Um, the streets and everything, but on your calendar days, on 19288, um, your calendar days, it's one to five days, it's like $60. Hold on one second, let's get the 19288, okay. please. 19288, the fees. Okay. As you see the calendar days, like on one and two, it says per street block per day. But on number three, it says one to five days, like $60. Is that $60 per day or $60 for the one to five days? Sixty dollars for one to five days is the way I intended. Okay. Well, whatever. I'm just saying, just that way. I just saw that. So it's not, it's it's not sixty dollars per day. It's sixty dollars no, for up to five okay. days. Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Well, those two things had so, nothing to do with the permit for the 
I have a question, Mr. Mayor, Mr. President, if you don't mind. So <coughs> on that on that particular situation, the, the, you know, we're so you're suggesting that we change that to two days for for the city to also approve. If it's a two day pending period, then it should be a two day. Or I think five, if it's five days, five, five days, because if you're coming in with the major motion picture, you know your, your time frame. So I think five days before would be So fair. you have to submit the application five days five prior. days before and you have up and the city has up to five days to right to approve it. Yeah, I just so saw a little discrepancy there on the timeline. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? No. Louise Bostick, 112 Elm Drive in Hammond. I just want to commend you, Jason, for this effort. I, I uh, used to have rental properties and I had a lease agreement and there was hardly any way to enforce it, but it was a way of communicating in advance with two people and it was a good thing. And I think this that's basically what this is. It's uh, it, it helps them and it helps us and, and I appreciate the effort and I commend you for it. Thank you. No more questions, any questions from the council? No. Go to number two, please. Number two, an ordinance to amend rule V24, travel regarding meal allowance of the personnel policies and procedure manual for city employees, Lacey Landrum. This is a recommendation uh, based on our, from our auditors. What we have done is we have always uh, set meal limitations for each meal for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And I think that ordinance came into effect somewhere in the late 90s, early 2000. Um, it had been modified once to increase those limits a little bit. And so what we're dealing with was the limits that we had established, I think, since about 2004 or so. What we're trying to do is go to a per diem for the day. Um, it's what a lot of the businesses use. It's what a lot of the other municipalities and parishes are using, including Tanchpaho Parish. They have found the system worked out really well for them because we've spent, Sada and I have spent hours going through receipts right now, and then employees end up writing a check for 50 cents or 53 cents back to the city because they spent $10.53 instead of $10. So what this would be is that all the employees would be reimbursed um, per the per diem only after their travel. They can't get, they can't get uh, the funds advanced to them. It's only a reimbursement after travel. Any questions from the public? Council? Thank you. Number three, please. Number three, an ordinance provide for issuance and sale of not to exceed $15 million of revenue bonds. Councilman Jason Hood. Mr. President, uh, fellow council members, I've been working, discussing this for two years now, since 2016, 2017, uh, all in the public bu bu uh, budget sessions, uh, as you may recall. And then last meeting I had asked to uh, have this placed on the agenda and for whatever particular reason, it didn't make it on the agenda. And so they're, they're, uh, we amended the agenda to add it, and there was, some, there was some question brought up about the transparency of that whole process. And somewhere along the way, the Chamber of Commerce was kind of alerted uh, to, the, to this situation, and which I feel was kind of used as a political tool to kind of defeat the proposed ordinance. Uh, you know, I thought the the Chamber of Commerce was to promote business, not necessarily to get involved in political situations. So, uh, so anyway, and, and then they sent out they sent out a survey with a very I spoke to Elizabeth what I what I felt was a very misleading question, and so I, I received some calls from it today and and uh, talked to some folks about it and uh, I, I want to make it clear I was just simply hoping to use the uh, proceeds from the bond to make infrastructure improvements, to better our city, which, I, which in turn, I believe, would help business, and which in turn would help the chamber. Uh, so, but, you know, this, the mayor and, and the administration seem to think that uh, even though we have a $21 million backlog, that the infrastructure is fine. And uh, throughout the city, and uh, 
So, you know, our five-year capital priority list, which I think is important to us, uh, I, you know, I think they view it as kind of a wish list for us and uh, don't really see the value in it. So what I'd like to do is, is I'd like to, you know, I'd like to, to defer to the uh, administration's leadership and I'd, I'd like to ask this, uh, for this item to be removed from the agenda. So I'll make a motion to amend, uh, to remove this item from the agenda when the appropriate time comes. So we Well, you can, if you remove it now, there's no public here. I, I just assume remove it now. I, I would second that. So Councilman Good makes the motion. Motion to remove it. Second by uh, Councilman Marshall. No, do roll call. Yeah. Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Aye. Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Aye. Motion removed. Okay, we are going to our regular session. Roll call, please. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Here. Councilman Jason Hood. Uh, here. Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Here. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Here. Councilman Mike Williams. Here. Ms. Beard, would you lead us to prayer, please? <laughs> Oh, Heavenly Father, once again, we are here to do the business for the city of Hammond. We pray, oh, Heavenly Father, that you give us open minds and open hearts, that we listen and do what is best for the citizens of this great city. We pray, oh, Heavenly Father, that we are uh, do things that are right and in order, that we are fair, and that everything that we do is to improve each and every person that lives in this city uh, way of life. We thank you for all that you do, O oh Heavenly Father, and for everything that you do, leading, us, leading and guiding us to make this a great place to live. These are all blessings we ask in the name of your precious Son, Jesus. To God be the glory. Amen. 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 Any council report? Um, and Mr. President, I, I do have a report. I um, um, I did send out a um, update on the on the uh, Zamuri Park Aquatic Center Advisory Committee to all the council members and the mayor. Uh, so if you have any questions about it, um, I'll be more than happy to answer those for you. Um, the one thing that was one comment I will make is that it was pretty. I think I said we, we have Frank DeVittorio and Josh Taylor. I don't see anybody else from the committee in the group, but I mean, you weren't supposed to be here, but you don't have to be here, but I just want to recognize you guys for being on the committee. And we had a, we had a really good um, uh, meeting. And I think one of the things that was, was very clear is that there are still a lot of decisions to be made, right, Josh? It was because when we started the process, it'd be, we almost had to start over again. So we're going to be expeditious as, as the councilman, the president was there and he's, he wants it to get done quickly. So we're going to work as fast as we can. But at the same time, we want to be very careful not to not, you know, vet the whole process. So uh, we're going to meet again on the 21st and I'll share the information with you guys in, in writing so that we can all be aware of what's going on. So if you have any questions, we'll go from there. And just one other comment. Because I want to, I want to, I want to agree on some of the things that Councilman um, Hood said, because I I was involved with a lot of those comments when we were in our meetings, and and it has been a, about a process of infrastructure and our capital projects, and we do have a twenty five million dollar um, capital project backlog for the citizens who don't realize it. We have a five year capital project plan that. Uh, we would hope that would be funded at about $5 million a year, but unfortunately, we probably spend at the most, since I've been on the council, maybe $2.2 million in one particular year. I think last year we did $1.8 million. So it is an underfunded capital project funding uh, request, so there is a backlog of capital projects, and it seems like it's not getting any better. 
Um, I think the main thing that, that we talked about last year, Councilman Hood, you know, during our meetings was that how do we create that priority list for the city so that we can work on those priorities? And I think that's something that we've been working to get from the, from the administration. We just haven't been able to put our arms around what is the list and what are the priorities. And so I think that that discussion, that discussion needs to continue and hopefully we can, um, you know, we can have some uh, transparent conversations about, you know, the capital projects for the city because um, there are lots of things we want to do. We can't do everything that we want to do, but we can surely have a priority list that we can work from. So I do want to, I, I do want to appreciate you, Councilman Hood, for working hard on that and hopefully we can get some more progress so we can reconsider those things down the road. That's all I have. Mayor. Okay. As a... Uh, council member said we have a capital five-year capital outlay plan and as Chuck Spangler has said often you cannot do everything on that plan at one time and you shut down the city because you're shutting down roads as asked to council members in the past year whatever we have not gotten done that needs to be done in your capital plan for this particular year and this year we're going to complete everything that we need to get done on that list for this year that being said let's back up to the consultant Jim Ryan. It was brought to my attention by a council member that they wanted to bring on someone new to consult the city for these bonds. And we've been using an individual named Grant Sluter and Foley and Judell for many, many years who's done pro bono work for us for free on certain items that was small. Had no problem with Grant Sluter, but apparently the council member wanted this new individual to come in. So the council approves this. That's fine. Red flag goes up to me, but I'm watching. And I went out and I followed the gentleman outside. And I said, Jim, this is very much like what happened in St. Tammany Parish. Then President Davis did not think that they needed to change counsel because you pay bonding counsel, the attorney, to do the bonding work. But you don't need to necessarily have a consultant to pay on these bonding issues, which is an extra sixty to $80,000 at times. Someone you don't need. That being said, now we want to bond out $15 million. Of what? Well, each council member can pick $3 million worth of something and let's bond it out. Seriously. Okay. Well, we have an issue with our budget, and the budget's tight. And we paid off a pass bond, which have freed up our budget and enabled us to do more projects. Not to mention, if you're watching the news, the president on TV is telling our governors across the United States, listen, for all these transportation issues that we're going to start paying for, we want you to start anting up. We want to do a percentage, 90-10, 80-20. And that's what we do with a lot of projects in the city of Hammond. We get money, grant money, or we'll get 100% funding. Perfect example. One of the things we were looking at buying was a sewer treatment pond out of our plant, something we need to do. $1.7 million. We received a loan from DEQ for less than 1%, 0.009. Less than 1%. So we don't need to buy on that issue, but yet the buying still needs to be at $15 million. For what? So now we're at 16. This year alone, we will have to start paying on this treatment pond, 1.7 million. So that's a debt we're gonna incur. We need to keep funds on the side for anything that comes up where we get funding from the federal and state government and we have to do a match. We do a lot of projects in the city of Hammond through match program and we need to have money on hand. That being said, the gentleman sends me, he says, oh, okay, I realize you think you have issues with paying this amount of debt. Yes, we do have issues with it. Well, what you can do is, you can do 30 years on the loan, on the bond. 30 years. We normally do 10, 15 years on bonding issues. And not to mention, if it's too much debt for you, you cannot pay principal till 2027. So you will pay interest only on this. So by 2027, we will pay $5.8 million in interest alone. Then when you pay this loan off, this bond off, in 2047, you will have paid $8.5 million in interest alone on a $15 million bond. Okay? 
That being said, this is not good for the city's budget. This is not good asking for $15 million worth of bonding and not having projects out there. The particular project at the sewer treatment pond is something we need to do, and we have a loan. We have an I&I &I project that we've been doing over here in the south end of Orange Street Park and that area in, in Mr. Hood's district. Now we're moving on toward Janice's district, um, and this is $800,000, close to $900,000. We received 100% grant money for this. These are the types of things that we look for to help us out with projects. So to say we're not doing projects and, and we need this $15 million worth of bonding, and for an individual to tell me who's a consultant that that's a good way to bond this out, I recommend to the board that you take and you make a motion to remove this individual as a council because we don't need a council. When we have something to bond, we go to the bonding commission and we do it what we did in the past and we get it bonded as we need it, not just $15 million or whatever. Mick, I ask you a question on that, just not to belabor the process, but I just want to ask a couple of questions. One, on the loan that you talked about for the, uh, for the, uh, do we have that loan, Lacey? No, we're That's in the process of That's what I thought. I thought that the mayor was incorrect. No, no, no. I'm going to ask, do we have that loan? No. I just want to make sure that for the record that we don't have that loan because you just said that we did. I know we talked about it and, and then we said we would apply for it. It takes a year to apply for it, which we're in the process of applying for it, but we have not secured the loan. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And I just want to make sure we said that August, correctly. We, we have the pre-application pending so right as now. as I said earlier, but, this but, year we will be paying But on just remember, what, I just want to make sure that, because we know as a part of being transparent to the mm -hmm. public, because if we talk about the stuff in mm -hmm. public, we want to make sure we're saying the correct things, which we do not have that loan approved. That's correct. Okay. I thought, I said, I thought that was correct. Um, and just, just for the record, because again, I'm not, this isn't, we're a council, we're a body, so we, I believe that it's important that we, that we talk things as a, as a group. When we had the discussion, I think the way Councilman Hood explained it to me, which is why I voted for it, was because we were looking for a bonding advisor. And it was the fact that the administration has an advisor, but the council really doesn't have an advisor. So this would just help us to further understand, uh, just like we have a, a council attorney and an administrative attorney just happens to be the same person, but for all intents and purposes, Andre, the council can have a separate attorney like if we wanted to. We just choose to have the same person. So the logic behind what I think Councilman Hill was doing was saying, let's just have an advisor to help the council through these processes, which I also think that the administration agreed. When we, had, when we approved it that night, uh, there was agreement from the administration that, that made sense. So I think that's why that happened. So it wasn't, I just want to make sure that the public knows because, you know, we, and I, it's, it's a disappointment somewhat that this is not something that we're doing that's behind the scene. We were just, I think, trying to improve the understanding of the bonding process. So I think that's why the council, I think we voted unanimously for that project. And, and from what I remember, the administration was comfortable with the decision that we made. Uh, the administration was not comfortable with it. Okay. And it that's fine. Not, I could so be wrong on that. You are wrong. Right. Okay. That's fine. And once again, not paying on a principal for 10 years and paying the interest on it, that being the schedule, 11.8 11 .8 million and, and uh, interest, that's not good, good advice. Mr. President, I, correct me if I'm wrong, I thought we removed this item from the agenda. Yeah, we did. I, I didn't know that there was anything left to discuss. So on that note, on a better note, our sales tax for December came in. We were in a negative on our budget. And December is the month that we always hope that's going to be big for us with sales taxes. Put us over the budget for the year and to help us through the next six months. So we did have a good uh, November, a good Christmas season, $2 million. So we're, we went from a negative 16000 on our budget to a positive 347000 693 so hopefully that'll help us through the next six months and our sales tax will continue to come in obviously it won't be christmas sales tax but we can get through the year uh, with a positive balance uh, last friday um, at the after school uh, program at the michael kennedy center buffy coleman who was a uh, an old uh, home globe trotter came in for the kids and performed for the kids and uh, talked to them about peer pressure and how to walk away uh, from bad situations 
And as we all live in neighborhoods that we know who does what they do, it's just a good thing to stay away from these individuals and move on and, and to believe in yourself and to know that you can be a better person. So that was a good day with Buffy and the kids. And uh, we'll leave it on that note. Thank you, Mr. President. Are there any business in the audience like to be recognized? Claude Fowler, 907 West Church Street. I, I, when I sell that, you know, I, 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 if somebody wanting to spend a lot of money, which the city was well, going to spend a lot of money on $15 million, they need to be a dedicated, have a plan where you're going to spend this money, but to, to satisfy us taxpayers. I just hate to, it's kind of like a home equity loan to take a damn vacation. That don't make sense. Have it dedicated. We need to get to finish the pool and whatever. I, I live on Church Street and I see people riding bicycles. And I am a senior citizen. I hope I don't have a senior moment. They don't have a reflector on that bicycle and they, they get hit. Because there's no bicycle path on Church Street for these folks. And I see young black people, young white, especially young black people, Pulling their motors, I mean, pulling their lawnmowers down. I've hired some of them. They're not very good because, because it, most kids want to get there and get it done and get paid. That's what's happened with, uh, with our country. Instant gratification. I don't have to do a good job. Just pay me, and then I move on. And, but, you know, that's what I think the taxpayers want is a game plan. Have this money, was it going to be spent on the swimming pool or what streets or whatever? Just throw it, I hate to say it, don't throw it in the general fund with you <coughs> politicians. That's the worst thing in the world, I, you know. <laughs> and what happens with politicians, they got to work to be reelected. <laughs> I should run for Mr. Hood's seat and not take a salary and then, re and then not run again. <laughs> Because I'm 74 years old. Well, Mr. President, I'm going to open up a new business, a lawn service. I'm going to cut Mr. Claude's yard. <laughs> I cut it myself now because they want to use that damn zero turn lawnmower. I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like Philip Dangle right across the street. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Mr. Claude. And we have that on tape, too. That's going to be great to go back and watch. <laughs> Approve of minutes, please. So, second. Who did first? Whoever you want to do. I'll make motion. Approve. Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilwoman Jennifer Scott Aye. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blood. Aye. Revolution nods. Old business nods. New business. Number one, a resolution to approve the Hammond Barbecue Challenge Inc. to hold the 2018 It's a Smoking Barbecue Challenge in downtown Hammond on March 23rd and March 24th, 2018, lying within the boundaries of Southwest Railroad Avenue from 100 yards south of Coleman Street to West Thomas Street, East Shore Street to Hanson Street, Coleman Street from K Street to Southwest Railroad Avenue. Eric Farris. How you doing, Eric Ferris? Uh, you need my address at, at uh, mm -hmm. 46242 Kentally Drive. Uh, <clears throat> once again, this uh, the barbecue's up. It's, this will be our 15th year here in wow. downtown. Uh, last year, 2017, first time in 14 years, we basically had a rain out. So we are running the same uh, charity as we did last year, again this year. I want to quickly just read through real quick. You know, Tark and Special Olympics are our main two, but we also do the, uh, the CASA, the Hammond Regional Arts Center, Louisiana Children's Discovery Center, Our Daily Bread, Outdoorsman's Helping Others, Pro Start Hammond High, and Springfield Hammond High, I mean, Springfield Pro Start, they do our vending. We do our own vending. Uh, Richard Murphy Hospice Foundation, Tangy Food Pantry, and Tangy Humane Society. That's 12 of the ones we help within our community, our local community, and that's why we do it. Um, 15 years has been a long time, but it's been fun, and it's been a great time with help from my, my main guy here, Brian. I have a question there. Yes. How long do you have to train that guy? He's been working for about five, six years now hard. So. He's one of you to let him talk. Right now. <laughs> <laughs> Ms. Shirey has indicated he is untrained. <laughs> <laughs> Brian Shirey, 19299 Country Club Lane. 
Uh, I don't know exactly what it is I'm supposed to say, but I would like. Motion to <laughs> Perfect. Second. Well, the reason I wanted to read this is, is last year we had some people want to know what, what the barbecue did for the community. And that's why I wanted to say that. And if you talk to any of these people, you'll see what we do. And the fact that we enjoy it. And we bring a lot of people in from out of town, and they use the hotels, they use the food. Um, they, they, just, they just love it here. And we have a waiting list every year for people to come awesome here. Event. Yeah. I'd like to add from as many as 16 and 18, 16, 18 states, 60 professional teams come in. And this is, one of, this is the fourth event on this circuit. It's, it's put Hammond on a map that we, most people don't live in the barbecue world. But in the barbecue world, Hammond is one of the top tier events. And it's come. because of the city. The city it's, what they it's do. because of what happens yeah. in downtown. We've talked about moving the venue to to accommodate the, the, the professional teams and the local teams. We have over usually sixty local teams, sixty professional teams. They come from thirteen states. They enjoy it. They spread the word and turn back and come around. Um, the, the last thing is this is the fifteenth year of this event. Uh, it's a, we have an all-volunteer board. We're a 501c3. We don't keep anything except a little bit just to start up. Sometimes we don't keep enough to start up because <laughs> we give it all I'm away. I'm the treasure. So. <laughs> but we do, um, to be in our 15th year, that it's not traditional for an event like this to last that long. Uh, and and, and it's, a, it's a testament to the citizens of Hammond and what it is we do to make them feel at home. So thank you for your past support and what will hopefully be your continued support. Thank you, Councilman. We got a motion to set on the floor. Oh, a motion to set. Mm -hmm. Mike and Lamar. Mm -hmm. Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilman Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Aye. Motion approved. Number two, a resolution to approve the Hammond Barbecue Challenge Inc. to sell beer and alcoholic beverages, specifically daiquiris, on the city's property line within the boundaries of Southwest Railroad Avenue. From 100 yards south of Coleman Street to West Thomas Street, East Charles Street to Hanson Street, Coleman Street from K Street to Southwest Railroad Avenue, from the hours of 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Friday, March 23rd, 2018, and from 10 a.m. to 11:30 p.m. on Saturday, March 24th, 2018. Motion to approve. Second. Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Aye. Motion approved. Number three. Mr. Mayor, I mean, Mr. President, before we go on, we, we forgot to do one important thing. Uh, we forgot to wish all the females in the audience happy Valentine's Day. Oh, yes. Happy and uh, my wife is here. We're going to have happy <laughs> Valentine's Day meal again. So we forgot to do that, so I think we're trying to pick up. Yeah, yeah, I just want to make sure we forgot to do that, so we got to make sure we tell everybody how to do that. Very constantly. Very transparent. Yeah. Lacey, happy Valentine's Day. Uh, we'll thank you. Number three, a resolution to approve the Hammond Barbecue Challenge, Inc., to get a waiver of the city's open container law within the boundaries between, between <laughs> Southwest Road Avenue from 100 yards south of Coleman Street to West Thomas Street, East Shore Street to Hanson Street, Coleman Street from Kate Street to Southwest Railroad Avenue for the hours of 3 p.m. to 11 p.m. on Friday, March 23rd, 2018, and from 10 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. on Saturday, March 24th, 2018. Motion to approve. Second. Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Aye. Motion approved. Number four, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Number, number four, resolution to approve Rite Aid located at 1918 Hammond Square Drive, Hammond, Louisiana, to sell high low package alcohol. The owner is Walgreens, Louisiana Walgreens Company, or? Inc., Jenny Wilson. Walgreens is the owner, Rite Aid's the name of the store. Um, we have some ownership changes, and um, they've applied for the sale of package alcohol. And they've met all the qualifications that we've asked them to meet, and I am requesting that it be approved. Um, we have representation here tonight. If you'd like to come on up, um, you can ask any questions you'd like to ask. <laughs> Just don't be here, so I have no idea. <laughs> How y'all doing? I'm Shauna Cassell. Shauna Cassell. And your address? 
There's our address over there. I'm new at this store, so I don't know the address. Uh, 1918 Hammond Square Drive. Motion to approve. Second. Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Aye. Motion approved. <laughs> Number five, a resolution to approve Santa Fe Cattle Company at 2035 Hammond Square Drive, Hammond, Louisiana, to sell high low alcohol on premises. The owner is BDL Enterprises of Louisiana LLC, Jenny Wilson. This is also an ownership change. Um, this is a restaurant, existing, um, prior serving alcohol. New ownership asking for approval. They have also met all the qualifications we've asked them to meet, and I am um, asking for approval tonight. I do have a representative here tonight. Um, come on up if you have questions. Well, he'll be glad to answer for you. Thank you, Jimmy. How are you doing? Thanks for having me. My name is Brian Lacombe, and uh, the restaurant is at 2035 Hammond Square Drive in the mall. Uh, the only change that we've actually actually done is just uh, change the ownership. I was a general manager there for eight years and had an opportunity to purchase the restaurant from the current owners from the corporate side, uh, which I was able to do on December 21st of last year. And uh, the only thing that's going to change is uh, the, the company name to BDL Enterprises, which is me and my wife's name. Thank you very so much. So it's a franchise, not a company. Store. It's going to be a franchise now. Uh, they're not expanding, so the only thing I can do to help expand that brand is to purchase the company from the corporate stores. So that's that's why we did it the way we did. Okay, that's good to know. Question. Motion to approve. Second. Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Norman Marshall. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Aye. Motion approved. Uh, thank you very much. Okay. Number six, a resolution to approve Fred's store of Tennessee Inc. located at 125 Highway 51 <coughs> North Hammond, Louisiana 70401 to sell high low package alcohol. This is an existing business and alcohol. The owners are Fred Stores of Tennessee, Inc. This is not a change of ownership. This is just the Fred Stores are now decided to incorporate selling packaged alcohol in their stores. They um, have also met all the qualifications we've asked them to do, and we're asking for approval for them to sell the package tonight. Do I have a representative? Yes. Okay. And he will answer any questions for you. Hello, I'm Virgil Vess, uh, store manager of Fred's on 125 North Morrison. If y'all have any questions, I'm free to answer. Oh, any questions? So moved. Second. Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Aye. Motion approved. Thank you for your time. Number seven, a resolution to approve amendment number one for <clears throat> $217,999.25 to rehabilitate runway 1836 and 1331 intersection contract between the City of Hammond and Michael Baker International Inc. The additional funds are paid through state and federal grants. David LeBou. Good evening, everyone. Uh, this is straightforward. We've, uh, we're trying to close out our runway intersection project. We've got some uh, additional work that requires required by the contractor and the engineer. This is the engineer's part of that part of that uh, work, uh, supervision and uh, and inspections, uh, and it's all paid for, covered currently and approved by, uh, actually directed by, uh, the FAA and the state on this project. So, motion to approve. Second. Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Aye. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Aye. Motion approved. Number eight, a resolution to authorize the mayor to sign amendment number one to the services agreement between the city of Hammond and Acadian Ambulance Service, Inc. Dwayne Mesh. Dwayne Mesh, 42590 West Club Deluxe Road, Acadian Ambulance Service, Hammond. Um, you guys have a contract with us. And I'm not here to ask you for more money. Uh, this doesn't affect the money. Um, as you know, the present contract that we have, it's, it's on the state contract as well. So we give you the same rates across the board when uh, we transport your inmates. And that's about a 65% reduction in the uh, usual and customary charges that someone would have uh, for those or any other that the city asks us to build them for that particular transport. And uh, we just have a few item changes that our legal department has asked that uh, we get signed off on 
and one was just a change to a 30-day uh, written notice if either party wants to uh, change or um, stop the contract. Also a mention of force majeure for anything, acts of God, ice storms, etc., uh, where it may prevent us from getting to those particular calls in a timely fashion. Um, and then the ability to do electronic signatures by submission or fax or uh, electronic scanning. And then the last is just to uh, have a clause in there for us being an uh, equal opportunity employer. It was just to tidy up our present contract. Okay. Question from the council? Make a motion to approve. Second. Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Aye. Motion approved. Thank you. Number nine, a resolution ought to a resolution authorizing the mayor to enter into an intergovernmental agreement on behalf of the city of Hammond with Tanchville Parish government for road overlays on Ravenwood Drive, Ellis Drive, Wildwood Drive, Carolina Street, Center Street, Dixie Drive, Kenny Street, Rosewood Drive, Rulin Street, Clark Street, and Top Hat Street, Lacey Landrum. This is just the tool that will allow the parish to come in and overlay all of these streets for us. There's no cost to the city. This is part of our uh, sales tax, one penny sales tax that goes over to road overlays. So there's one, I think, in nearly every district, if not every district on here. Okay. Okay. Councilman <coughs> Johnny Blunt. Uh, Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Aye. Motion approved. Number 10, a resolution supporting one, the submission of an application for $15,000 to Johanna Favre Fund for Historic Preservation for the preservation of the designated historic structure, that is the Miller Memorial Library, and two, supporting a cash match of at least $15,000, Charles Brochure. This is one that you guys may remember uh, we've approached you before in the past about. We had applied to the Division of Historic Preservation, ran to a snag with that. We're able to convert those monies to the Levy Building, which we did last year. Mm -hmm. um, we haven't given up on applying to the Division of Historic Preservation. I've been in contact with them. But Leah Solomon with our Historic District made us aware of this other opportunity now that the Historic District and the City are a member of this nonprofit. Um, they actually operate like some of our North Shore Foundations, which have multiple private funders under them. Um, that's what this fund is. It's a $15,000 opportunity. Uh, it's a dollar for dollar in kind match. Um, we do have funds, uh, about $35,000 in the Mill Memorial Library Fund, which has to be used for the building. So we're hoping that between those funds, what's in the library fund, the, the grant money, uh, we'll be able to pay for most, if not all, of the cost of the roof. I'm still working on pricing. Of course, there's a lot of variance there based on the type of roof we get. And if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer. So does that give us like, if we get the grant 45 grand? It's this is going to be about 50. If the 35 plus the 15, we give us about 50. 50, right, yeah. 50. And, and, and so you're working out the price? For We're working on prices now. I was up on the roof of the building oh, uh, okay. Friday with the contractor. Did you figure out the price when you were up there? Uh, they've given us a ballpark <laughs> estimate, but uh, again, it's variable based on the type of roof. So we're trying to get that price to something that's, that's more affordable to the city. And of course, we would come back after, if we get the grant, hopefully we will, come back to the council with actual numbers in hand at that time to get your approval to, for the contract and the match and whatnot. Motion to approve. Second. Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Aye. Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Aye. Motion approved. Thank you. Number 11, a resolution accepted as substantially complete on sewer and drainage system evaluation, survey Whitmore Project 616 and 420-11808 commencing 45-day lien period withholding 10% retainage. Chuck Spangler. Thank you so much, Tanaya. Um, as you know, we uh, combined a sewer and drainage survey of the Whitmar subdivision and the surrounding infrastructure, including water and sewer lines, into one contract. That contract initiated in August. They finished it in December. They turned over the report to us three weeks ago, and we've been working pretty hard on getting the report complete and evaluated into so we can establish 
some of the worst deficiencies and go in and take care of them, which will be the next item on the agenda. So my recommendation is that we accept the work on the sewer and drainage system evaluation survey since it is complete. That's, that's item 11. Second. Second. Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilwoman <coughs> Janice Cordebeer. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Aye. Motion approved. Number 12, a re resolution to approve budget change form 18-04, transferring 85,000 from I and I repairs project number 616-31401 to Whitmore Sewer Rehabilitation. 6161804. This is what it looks like. This is our typical uh, instrument that we use to pretty much uh, track the funds uh, for the accounting department to understand where these funds are being attached to what project. Uh, we had in our original budget for Whitmore 150,000 for rehab, 50,000 for survey. So when you see in that first line, there's a 200,000 line. Well, that number, of course, is only 150 left there, right around actually 147 left. So that appropriation was 147. We're adding. I, t I talked to the mayor. We looked at our rehab needs in Whitmore, and our rehabs are categorized from five down to one, five being the worst, five, four, three, two, one. And we took all of the inventory of all the rehabilitation in Whitmore. We took all the fives and the fours, which are the worst, and the next to worst, and it's about 275,000 to fix it. We only have 147. So the mayor and uh, I and Lacey sat down and looked at the DEQ monies. The DEQ monies, which are basically dormant, are strictly for I and I, and we have about $85,000 unencumbered in that fund that we have not attached to any other project at the moment. And that's what I'm here to do tonight is to request that that money from that DEQ balance of the revolving loan fund, which is closed out, it was closed out in December be transferred 85000 which is what is available, into the Whitmar Rehab, which will get us close to our needs. It won't quite cover it, but we're hoping in the next budget year we can bridge that gap and cover everything that's needed to be done in Whitmar. But this will allow us to at least start that construction work with a pretty decent budget. So the nature of this request, again, is to transfer 85000 from a DEQ revolving loan fund unencumbered surplus to the Whitmar Rehab Project, which is not bid yet. It won't bid till we know the, the, what the budget is, which will probably be in about 30 days. Second. Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilwoman Janice Carter-Beard. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Aye. Motion approved. Final Aye. adoption of an ordinance number one. Final adoption of an ordinance to regulate filming and to provide for filming permits. I'd like to, Mr. President, if we can make the amendment um, that includes um, Nick. Would you mind? Uh, do you have Do you have any language in particular that you want us to? Sure. Can you Can you mind bringing that up? Andre. I had item H, maybe Andre. Well, yeah. Let me look at. This. Let's look at it, please. So, if we read that, and then if that's the amendment, well, I want says, to. Um, the thought is to exempt. All filming activities with a crew of less than five individuals. So that would include business. So would it be local? Would we just could we put in there local? I mean, what I would what I would recommend is let's just table this for next meeting. Let me deal with Nick. Let me fine tune this because I don't want to create some okay. that's fine. exemption that's going to apply to things we're not intending. I don't think you're intending to do. I can make that change on a five day. I can clean up. There's one, one other. We're going to make that change. There's another little change we need to clean up. So you may want to just table this to the next meeting. I'll get with you and, and fine tune the language on that exemption. If you're intending to carve out commercials, that's one thing. If you're intending to carve out all filming activities with less, less than five people, that's, I mean, that, that may be tough to, for you to monitor and enforce. I think that what, what I would like to see if we can carve out where our local businesses like like Gagliano or Flystone or Antoine are not going to be, you know, caught up in that just like we do for still photography. So I think that's kind of what, what, what I'm thinking me, as well. Right. That's just my opinion. This is my, my opinion. Uh, Second. 
Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Lamar Marshall. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Aye. Item tabled. Number two, final adoption of an ordinance to amend rule V24 travel regarding the meal allowance of the personnel policies and procedures manual for the city employees. So move. <coughs> Councilman Jason Hood. Aye. Councilwoman Janice Carter Beard. Aye. Councilman Mike Williams. Aye. Councilman Moore Marshall. Aye. Councilman Johnny Blunt. Aye. Motion. Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye.